I saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared like a bride adorned for her husband. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone, and this lovely, bright, sunny day. We celebrate today the feast of the dedication of the Cathedral Church of our diocese. Dedications go right back into Maccabees um, when they celebrated a victory, and that's now called in the Jewish terms the Feast of Hanukkah. That's a tradition throughout uh, the Jewish history and also the Christian history that we look to symbols. The church, of course, is really the body of Christ, not a building, but they're still symbolic, and the large church on the top of the hill in Arundel, which was never intended to be a cathedral, but a parish church built by the Duke of Norfolk, um, has become our mother church for the diocese of Arundel and Brighton. And it's a symbol of the church itself. The church, as St. Ignatius of Antioch said, is not complete unless, with, along with all the faithful, it has a bishop priests and deacons, the threefold ministry. Without any one of those, the church is not complete. So we celebrate our completeness, our unity in Christ, and that these buildings are but representatives of the real body of Christ, which we are the stones of that building. I'm saying this Mass this morning for the repose of the soul of Tom Reed. Let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are now seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who from living and chosen stones prepare an eternal dwelling for your majesty, increase in your church the grace you have bestowed, so that by unceasing growth your faithful people may build up the heavenly Jerusalem. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And we sit for the readings. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, have a care for justice and with integrity for soon my salvation will come and my integrity be manifest. Foreigners who have attached themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love his name and be his servants, all who observe the Sabbath, not profaning it and cling to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain. I will make them joyful in my house of prayer their holocaust and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all the peoples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord God of hosts. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord God of hosts. My soul is longing and yearning, is yearning for the cause of the Lord. My heart and my soul bring out their joy. To God, the living God. How lovely, How lovely is your dwelling place, place, Lord God of hosts. The sparrow herself finds a home, and the swallow a nest for her brood. She lays her young by your altars, Lord of hosts, my King and my God. How lovely are your dwelling place, Lord God of hosts. They are happy who dwell in your house, forever singing your praise. Turn your eyes, O God, our shield. Look on the face of your anointed. How, How lovely are your dwelling place, Lord, Lord God of hosts. One day within your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. 
the threshold of the house of God I prefer to the dwelling of the wicked. How lovely are your dwelling place, Lord God of hosts. Let us stand for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. I have chosen and consecrated this house, says the Lord, that my name may remain in it for all time. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Just before the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And in the temple he found people selling cattle and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting at their counters. Making a whip he, out of some cord, he drove them all out of the temple, cattle and sheep as well, scattered the money changers, knocked over their tables and said to the pigeon sellers, take all of this out of here and stop turning my father's house into a market. Then his disciples remembered the words of scripture, zeal for your house will devour me. The Jews intervened and said, what sign can you show to justify for what you've done? Jesus answered, destroy this sanctuary and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews replied, it has taken 46 years to build this sanctuary. Are you going to raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the sanctuary that was his body. And when Jesus rose from the dead, his disciples remembered that he said this, and they believed the scriptures and the words he had said. The Gospel of the Lord. It was the Feast of Dedication and it was winter famous words from St. John's Gospel in chapter 10. And then Jesus was in the temple in the portico of Solomon, we're told. Well, today it's summer and it is the feast of dedication of our own version of that temple in Jerusalem, the Cathedral Church of Our Lady and St. Philip Howard at Arundel. Liturgically, it's ranked as a feast throughout the diocese. And why is that, you might ask? An obvious answer would be the importance of the cathedral to the life of the local church. It's there that the bishop has his chair or cathedra, which gives its name to the building. And it's there we celebrate the great moments of faith in our community. Many of us in normal times have gone to confirmations there, the rite of election, the great chrism mass, Corpus Christi and the procession over the carpet of flowers and so on. It is a symbol of the unity of the diocesan family, which covers the counties of East and West Sussex and Surrey outside of London. But that answer alone wouldn't explain this feast day. After all, when we celebrated yesterday the first martyrs of the Sea of Rome, that liturgy was an optional memorial, a less important rank than feast. The reason for this is deeply theological. In all religions, the temple is the place where the divinity is thought to make itself present to worshippers. By means of the temple, they enter into communication with the world of the gods. And we see this in all forms of religion and paganism. We see this in Buddhism, and we saw it in the Old Testament where the temple at Jerusalem is a sign of the presence of God among his people. But the Old Testament sign was provisional and passing, destined to be replaced with a sign of another sort, not however a building, but the body of Christ and his church. And that's why the church is the new Jerusalem, itself a sign of God with us. We as members of the body of Christ form a spiritual temple, not built by human hands but together with Christ. 
St. Peter tells us we are one building. So our feast today celebrates the invisible richness that eclipses even the most beautiful art and architecture of the great cathedrals of Europe. We rejoice in the presence of God in our midst, not just within the four walls on a hilltop overlooking Arundel, but in the body of Christ, which is at one and the same time temple, sacrifice and priest. At the same time, as members of this local church, cared for and led by its shepherd, Bishop Richard, the anniversary of the dedication of our cathedral to God's praise and glory is a symbol only as we worship in spirit and in truth. And it reminds us today of our call to work together in that same spirit and in truth, in faith and charity, for its growth and upbuilding of the church, the body of Christ within this diocese, within this parish. We all have a part in that. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, the offering made here, and grant that by it those who seek your favour may receive in this place the grace of the sacraments and an answer to their prayers. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in your benevolence you are pleased to dwell in this house of prayer, in order to perfect us as the temple of the Holy Spirit supported by the perpetual help of your grace and resplendent with the glory of a life acceptable to you. Year by year, you sanctify the church, the bride of Christ, foreshadowed in visible buildings, so that, rejoicing as the mother of countless children, she may be given her place in your heavenly glory. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim, Holy Holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. <coughs> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, with St. Pius X, St. Edward, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. be built up like living stones into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. O God, who chose to foreshadow for us the heavenly Jerusalem through the sign of your church on earth, grant, we pray, that by partaking of this sacrament, we may be made the temple of your grace and may enter the dwelling place of your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, lovely to see you here this morning. If a little unexpected on my part, as the system indicated, it was a closed mass. And and I saw nobody (laughs) connected, but you must have registered somehow to get here. But anyway, you're here. That's the main thing. And all the people on the live stream are joining us, and that's a, a wonderful thing to have such a large congregation of people. And although the pandemic is coming to an end, hopefully, we trust in that, um, that we will be continuing a live stream mass for the benefit of those who are genuinely unable to get to the church. Um, Not all you people who are laying about on your sofas uh, participating or in your gym jam still. Uh, You'll have to get dressed and come to church. But there's many people I know are not lazing around or in their gym jams and they are worshipping very much with us every day. And it's great to have you with us. I enjoy the rest of the day. We will have um, Vespers this evening as usual at six o'clock. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.